AI is not a zero sum game. There's room for everybody to grow with it. The more people that use it, the better the technology gets. So that's why I'm so passionate about it is I know it's going to make a massive dent in the world. It already is. But the sooner that we all want to try and we want to lean into it and we want to experiment with it, man, great things are going to come out of it. Welcome, everybody, to The Chris Harder Show, where we are making you unapologetic about your pursuit of success, knowing that when good people like you make good money, they can then do great things. My name is Chris Harder, and several times per week, I will bring you epic guests, solo episodes, and every single tool, trick, and skill set you need to grow your business, grow your money mindset, and to grow your wealth to levels that you have never reached before. I've ended up in a unique place in life where I've got the experience, the connections, and all of the secrets that it takes to be successful. And and I'm lifting the curtain to reveal it all to you in an effort to help put you in a position of abundance so great that you can then be as generous as possible. So let's lock arms and let's get started. Hey, everybody, welcome back to The Chris Harder Show, where we absolutely believe that both prosperity and generosity can and must coexist. All right, so if you're at all confused about all of the AI and what you're supposed to know and are you supposed to be using it, are you missing out, do you have FOMO, so am I. Like, that is me. I don't know tech. I don't understand tech. I know, joke's on me because I'm building an app, but that's why I've got a business partner that thrives in tech. And this whole AI thing, I know that the biggest personal brands are already using it a ton to outdo me. And so I'm going to get to the bottom of how should we be using it with a tech expert friend of mine, Jim Carter. He's been on before, you know, dear friend, one of the most genius tech guys I know. He has dedicated his entire future, starting a little while back, to becoming the AI expert for small businesses, for solopreneurs, so that you can understand how to use it. So I asked him, hey, buddy, favor, will you come on? Will you share with us what some of the things that we're supposed to be using AI for in our business And I think it's going to blow your mind. So over the next 15, 20 minutes, take some notes, get ready. This is going to be insane. All right, Jim, my friend, thank you for coming on the show and helping make sense of this AI madness. You are like my go-to guy when it comes to anything tech, but I'm like, okay, I don't get this. Jim will know. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me. You know, you've been on the show a bunch of times and that's because every time I'm confused about something when, you know, in the tech world or like a new advancement, I bring you on to help make sense of it. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So I see everybody talking about chat GPT and I've tried it myself. It's pretty cool. Lori actually uses it once in a while now. She'll like, oh, I got to come up with a podcast episode. So she'll use it to, you know, give some ideas for podcast episodes, script out some ideas. I get the basic gist of it, but I want to talk about how AI and some of these new tools apply to solopreneurs, smaller entrepreneurs, anybody with a startup, that kind of thing. Because if I'm confused, I bet most other people are confused as well. And I don't have the time to figure this stuff out. So can you start by giving me just like, give me the gist of what's happened in the past few months and why everyone's talking about it? Man, it is such a rapidly evolving space that you're not alone. And that's the craziest thing about it is by the time we're done recording this, it's probably going to evolve. And What I absolutely love about how fast AI is evolving is as we use it, we're actually creating a better product. So the more questions we ask it, the more we understand how we can evolve it into our own business. So kind of like you talked about, you've experimented with it. You probably asked it to write a social media caption. You probably asked it to like play with a blog post, kind of come up with something. But chances are, if you just ask it the basic questions, you're going to get basic output. And that's no fun. We actually want something that has a lot of value, that it's on brand, that the results speak like we would want to speak. So the more that we actually get good at asking it a better prompt, and that prompt is the way that we start to really dive in and understand, okay, I don't just want you to write a blog post. I want you to act like a certain person writing a blog post. I want you to be a financial expert. I want you to be somebody who understands this. I want you to kind of mold into this actor. And as that actor, I want you to accomplish these certain things. Oh, and by the way, if you don't know the the answer to this, or if I'm too vague, ask me more questions until I can continue to give it as much input as possible. And it's going to give you a better output. And that's one of many ways to kind of think about this. And that's where it starts to get really fun. 
So I, I want to pause you right there because it's already a little bit over my head. So I want to bring everybody along for the ride. And I, I think what you're saying is this. The very first time I went on the chat GPT, you want to know what I asked it? Yeah. I said, write me a children's book about a sheep -a doodle named Bananas. And it did. It wrote me a children's book in like seconds about a sheep -a doodle Bananas that went running through the field and loved its owners and all this stuff. It was crazy. But then I did what you said. I asked it another question to uh, take it deeper. I said, okay, now make Bananas the sheep -a doodle sassy. And then it worked in all these like sassy things that he did. And, right. and then I said, okay, you know, now say it with a Boston accent. And like, it literally would do anything, kept refining it in any way I wanted. And I had this children's book about my dog. Isn't that wild? And it happened, in seconds. it happened in seconds, Jim. So that was the very first time I used it and realized, oh, this is pretty dope. But I haven't applied it really towards business yet. So what is some of the low-hanging fruit out there? Everyone who listens to this, they're an entrepreneur. What is some of the low-hanging fruit? What are some of the crazy, sexy things that we can do with this now for business? So just like you said, once you started asking it better questions or having it to refine it, that's where you started to get output that you really fell in love with. That's what I love about it. So let's zoom out and think about it. You have a podcast, Chris. This is what we're talking about right now. When this audio comes out, we can easily use a service like ChatGPT or something similar. And you could have it transcribe it at a fraction of a cost of that anything else is doing it out there. And that's because the service is evolving so rapidly that you can repurpose things at a higher rate and more effectively than you could before. Mm -hmm. So for example, there's a brand new service that just came out. It's called Assembly AI. And they charge a fifth of a penny for every second that they transcribe. A fifth is of a accurate? Penny. It's absolutely accurate. 0. 0.0005. And it's wildly accurate. The only other best service that's out there right now doing it is Rev. And they use their own AI, but they charge a prime for it. The fact that it's all evolving so fast, it's a land grab. So when you think about how can I repurpose more of my content that used to cost me a lot that I probably didn't do because I didn't want to invest in it and I didn't want that overhead. Well, now you can do so much more with it. So this podcast, it can actually detect that there's two different speakers. You might not have been able to do that with a simple transcription before, or maybe you were getting the output from something very general and it had a lot of misspellings. The more that AI really starts to understand you, the better it gets. So that's one really cool way that we can do it is you can start with a core piece of content that you already have, something as simple as a Zoom or as great as a podcast or a YouTube show, and you can start to actually extract long form content from it. And then imagine how cool it would be, Chris, if you had a podcast where you talked about your family and you talked about the dogs and you talked about how much you love playing with them. And maybe you talk about the fact that one of them likes swimming and one of them doesn't. I saw that on your story the other day. Yeah. And you just actually plug that into chat GPT and you say, learn this about my family, about my dogs. One of them's named this, one of them's named that. And now you just say, write a children's book. You actually don't even have to tell it to write it about your dogs or your family. It's going to understand it enough where it can actually extract the key things that you want because you've trained it and you've given it more information about what you want it to come up with, you don't even have to ask it. So now think about how you can apply that in your business. Once it knows your purpose, your vision, the impact you make, the way that you like to show up, the things that you like to talk about, now you don't have to actually say, I want you to write a blog post about this because of this for this person. You just say, write a blog post about something that I love or a pillar topic or something on something that you really want to get across. And it's going to understand enough because you've taken the time to give it the real data. That's where it gets really fun. You know, my brother did this. It was kind of creepy. He had typed in because he started experimenting with blog, like, hey, how can we email more content to our email list? And he had typed in something along the lines of, I wish he was here to describe it, but I remember him something along the lines of, write me you know, five tips about money mindset. And then he said, now say it the way that Chris Harder from the Chris Harder show would have done it. And it knew and it changed it. And it gave a whole bunch of content in my words from my past podcasts. That's crazy, dude. It is. And Chris, think about how much stronger that output would be if every single show that you had had a fully fledged transcription. And all that extra information was out there, right? It may just have learned about that from show notes 
or I may have learned about that from just finding information on what iTunes had or anything else. We've got years of show notes out there and that's probably all, where it from. all of it's out there and it knows how to process it. But that's why, you know, people have asked me because I've been an SEO for years and some people are like, okay, does this get rid of SEO? I say no way in hell. If anything, I think this makes SEO even more important because if you don't feed AI good quality content, how do you expect it to actually have an output that you want? So the reason that I'm really passionate about long form copy and what that can do with AI is because of that exact example. That's so cool that Nick was able to do that. Because now the more content you can put out there, the better AI is going to get to know you. And it'll actually train itself to be able to come up with a better output as you need. I remember you and I were talking, we were doing a bus ride together recently. And I was telling funny to the listeners, you know, you're in the elite mastermind and, uh, you know, we're taking the bus out to the side by sides that we took out in the desert. And we're just starting to talk about this a little bit. You're like, Chris, do you realize you've got six years of podcast or five years of podcast, whatever it is? We could go back and very inexpensively, like you said, fractions of a penny, transcribe all of your shows into emails to send out, into opt-ins, into mini courses in a matter of seconds and minutes. Like, in other words, if you've been doing the work in any form, I don't care, podcasts, YouTube videos, blogging, whatever, you can now repurpose all of this into brand new content that people haven't heard because no one goes back and listens to the ones from three years, four years, five or six years ago. So it could be brand new, awesome content. And you can do it so much cheaper than you could before. And we were jamming out about this on the bus is we know all the things we should be doing. We should be sending emails. We should be building lists. We should be writing blogs. But do we ever always do them? No, we see the shiny thing. We want to go towards the newest feature that Instagram puts out, whatever that is. But AI gives us this fantastically unique ability to almost be a time machine and to go back and say, you know what, I put that off and now it feels like this overwhelming amount of work that I just actually don't want to accomplish. You could on the weekend while watching a movie with your laptop, just power through throwing in YouTube links, throwing in audio clips of some of your favorite episodes and getting all that content and doing more with it. We've jammed out about this Jake in the mastermind as well, who he's got this amazing process to help you release a best-selling book, for example. Yeah. We were talking about what does this do for a book? And with GPT-4, the latest iteration of at least what ChatGPT is helping us make in conversational form, you can have thousands of words of output and it doesn't miss a beat, right? So how does this affect everything that we're doing from here out? Well, it all starts with you've got to want to get more out of what you already have. Mm. So Chris, if I challenge you right now, think of your top five episodes that you've ever done. It could have been with guests. It could have been just a solo that you know you're on fire on. It could have been a really passionate one, something about you personally, whatever it is. I know you can start to think of this. Well, even if all you did was create really good long form copy from that, that's fine if you post it on your blog. But what if you actually took that and you said, hey, AI, learn about all of these things. They're the most passionate, most important things for me. And now act like a marketing expert. Help me get creative with ways that I can promote my word, get that out there and come up with titles for Instagram captions, come up with more blog posts from it. Rewrite this. Hell, explain it like I'm five. <laughs> right? that whole explain it like you I'm just five. gave me an idea. So real world practical application. I'm always trying to think of, hey, what's the next, you know, Instagram caption I want to do. I could literally first go back and transcribe all my old episodes and then say, create me a Instagram post from episode 550. Create me an Instagram post about three ways to release fear around money. So we've been talking about what to do if the work's already been done. What if someone's like, well, that's great, but I don't have five years of podcasts. Well, that's great. I don't have five years of YouTube. What can they use it for right now that's a practical business application? Oh, God, there's so many ways. So we talked a little bit about text. Let's actually switch to different media. So one of my favorite things about what you can do with new AI tools is actually coming up with original image content. There's tech coming out. You might have heard some of these terms called stable diffusion, Dolly, mid journey. A lot of these startups and these services are launching ways where you can just type in what you want to create in terms of imagery, and it will actually output that. You can say, I want an image of a majestic eagle soaring over a sheep -a doodle that is swimming in a pool, <laughs> and it will come up with something wildly cool. Now, if you kind of same idea as we talked about with chat, 
if you just give it the basic information, it's going to give you a basic output. But when you really start to tune it and you say, I want it cinematic, I want depth of field, I want it to invoke a feeling, I want it in HD, I want it, you know, and, and you start talking about lighting and, and like those types of things. It's really wild how cool that can be. And what's awesome is uh, my favorite one right now is mid journey. And mid journey is implemented into, we talked about this in Discord. It's the online chat system. And what's really neat about it is you join a channel on Discord and you just start, you start watching what other people are doing. So you actually learn through assimilation. I've gotten some of my favorite prompts to, to create images and things by just watching what other people are creating. And the results are wildly cool. I've gotten business ideas from it. I've gotten social media content topic ideas from it. And it doesn't matter what your business is. Hell, you can actually grab a piece of paper and sketch a smiley face. And you can upload that to MidJourney and say, you can basically paste in the link. And you say, create an image that evokes emotion that's colorful and vibrant. It's HD and it's on a beach using this. And it'll create an image based off of something that you have. Bro, so is this what, do you, do you remember a few months ago when everybody was uploading like four or five pictures and then it spit out like 200 of these space pictures of, is that basically what was happening? That was when that developer launched that. And I did it too. Like I had to see them. I did it for my kids. Yeah. Like they love seeing their AI photos. It was super cool. And it was also timely. It was right around Christmas. So it was great. So they were like, one of them had, you know, like, like next to a reindeer and there was Christmas tree and stuff like that. But that's AI at its finest. It takes something, it evolves it to evoke a feeling or a different scene or tries to make you come up with new ideas, the way that it can change it up. And it spits out these options. And you can do all that right now. And all of this stuff is free. It's absolutely free right now. So my favorite thing about this, Chris, is how many times do we just get stuck staring at like a white screen or an open document? And we're just like, we don't create, we don't do the thing that we know we need to do because you're just like, ah, God, why? Like, why do, why do I need to start from scratch? What this does is it gives you a sidekick. It gives you an assistant. It gives you the ability to just hit go and to almost get you 95% of the way there with only minimum amount of information. I mean, hell, I just launched a landing page for a, for, a, for a service that I'm running. And I was like, I need graphics for this. It can't just be all text. So what did I do? I went on to MidJourney and I said, photo of an entrepreneur at her computer using ChatGPT, excited, opportunistic about life. You know, just I was putting all these words in to like have this emotion and this feeling. And the output was cool. And then what did I do? I wrote the prompt below it. Like, by the way, you're going to learn about AI from me, but I'm going to show you how you can make images like this. And some of my favorite accounts are the ones that are just taking you along for the ride. They're showing you exactly how to do it. And that's what I love doing is just sharing exactly how to do this because AI is not a zero sum game. There's room for everybody to grow with it. The more people that use it, the better the technology gets. So that's why I'm so passionate about it is I know it's going to make a massive dent in the world. It already is. But the sooner that we all want to try and we want to lean into it and we want to experiment with it, man, great things are going to come out of it. It's interesting because as you or somebody else had mentioned to me that you can ask it to code a, a site. In other words, like build me a landing page, a sales page for a mastermind and have it include these features and, and it'll build you. It'll spit out a freaking web page. Is that right? Yeah, it absolutely will. You can ask it to code a module that you can copy and paste and put on your website to do something. You can upload a sketch and say, create the code that I would need for my website in order to put this into WordPress and have it have it actually render it. AI doesn't just know the English language. It knows tons of other languages. It also knows how to merge the two and it knows coding languages. So you can have it write a block of code in English and document it in French. There's really no limit to the creativity of it, which is why so many people are using it. And that's why startups are just coming out left and right right now, trying things and figuring whoa, out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You just gave it. me another idea. So our mutual friend, Lewis House, he started yeah. doing his podcast, having him do a voiceover in Spanish, right? So wait, couldn't I take all of my past podcasts transcribe them using AI into blogs 
and then say, now write it in Spanish so that I could expand my reach and expand my impact and expand my audience? You absolutely can. And that would have cost a mint before. It would have cost a lot, but it gets better. <laughs> so AI is so rapidly evolving that even me who studies it and keeps up with it, I still fall behind. And that's what I love about it is it's going to be new by the time we're done with this. There is an AI service where you can upload two minutes of you just speaking and you can type in what you want and it'll actually replicate your voice and it'll give you that output. Lewis, you, I mean, for example, I actually don't have to be speaking on this recording. I could have typed all of this out and I could have just had AI output the actual audio file and you could just play it for the podcast. We're Surprise getting everybody. I don't actually, actually have Jim. Surprise, on. Jim's not here. Talking to an AI robot. Just kidding. That's not true. It's not true this time. But I mean, Chris, think, think about what that could do for you as a human that wants to stay consistent. Let's say that like right now I'm losing my voice. Let's say that you needed to be consistent. You need to show up on your podcast. There's a very real likelihood in the future that if you are traveling and you can't record a podcast, you can still type one out. Or you can have AI give you a mashup of your greatest hits and you can have AI just spit out a vocal version of what it is and push it out. People wow. aren't going to difference because it's that good and it's only going to get better. That's amazing. You just gave me a real world practical application. There's a lot of times I'm traveling and I'm like, I got to get an episode like Nikki, my podcast producer, she needs one. And I've already got them written out, but I'm trying to find a place in a hotel or a quiet place to record it. So we're close to the point where I'll be able to send that transcript. And it'll record it in my voice and nobody will know none the wiser. We're already there. In fact, we're already there. if you want to do this, let's think about what your next show should be. Let's do a 10 minute show and you pick a topic and you type it out or better yet, you have AI learn about a specific topic and create a podcast episode. Done. We got to help harder. Done. We're going to do it and we're going to publish it. And I want everybody to hear how close it is. And until you actually are told that it's a different voice, it's really hard to distinguish different. This is freaking me out, dude. Okay, guys, we. This is how wild. Help me. You're not going to know what it is till we tell you at the end. <laughs> I'm going to do one of my podcasts using an AI mockery of my voice. This is going to be so dope. Okay, so I, I'm seeing all these practical business applications. Give me one or two more because here's what I really want to say, Jim. Imagine if we could go back to the time when Facebook ads only cost 15 cents per lead instead of five dollars. Imagine if we could go back to the time when email marketing open rates were 80% instead of 18%. Imagine we could go back to the time where you know, like, we're there right now with business applications for AI. And the, we're going to look back soon. It's going to be the good old days. So I don't want my listeners to miss out on some of these practical business applications. What's one or two more they should be considering? So there's a couple of ways that you can approach it. The first thing is you just got to be willing to ask questions and to try some stuff. Because just like we had here, when we have a conversation about it, we figure out how we can use it. Mm -hmm. There are some really cool startups that are coming out almost every day. And I text these out. I post them on Instagram because I want to share what I learn. I'll give a couple of examples. So let's say you work with a lot of spreadsheets and you're always in Google Sheets or you're in Excel. There's a new service out called AI Excel Bot. And if you're struggling to write a function that searches in a cell and looks for something and then it totals it up, but only when there's another use case, like a lot of times we just don't do the thing we know we need to do because we get stuck. Again, like getting stuck, not creating. With this service, you can just type in search in cell B5 for the word X. And when it's found, output the word whatever else. And it'll go in and it'll write the whole function. You can copy and paste it, plug it in. I tried it yesterday. I had a I had an email list that was, you know, about 10, 20,000 long. And I was looking for like certain words in different segments. And I was like, uh, I could split this to columns. And if I do that, then they're out of order. And I'm just like, I don't really want to do this. And I realized I had the tool. So I said, go into the cell, look for these specific keywords where you find it, output the word true. And I did it, plugged it in, put it all through the way. I didn't have to sit there and do the homework and go to the documentation and figure out what it is that I'm actually putting. I'm, like, I'm, I'm a coder and I know how to do that, but I still didn't want to do it. Like that's how real AI is getting. It also has the inverse. You can plug in a really weird looking function that maybe somebody gave you in a spreadsheet and say, explain what this means. 
and it breaks it apart and it writes it in English in plain language that says, this is what this function does. First thing it does is it goes here, it then does this, and it moves forward. And that's a real world example of how you can just use AI. It has nothing to do with chat GPT or anything else. You're just using the technology to make your life better. Jim, you Another just point. gave me like so much early. So I'm bad. I don't know how to use Excel very well. I don't know how to do, I find myself building Excel spreadsheets once in a while, but I don't know how to do formulas. And I always screw them up. So you're telling me I can literally be like, create me a formula that multiplies column C by row 14. Yep. It absolutely will do that. And it'll just do it for me now. In fact, I, I just picked out a reel the other day, kind of showing how that works. And yeah, if, if you if you check out my Instagram feed, I'm always posting reels like this about how to use these from the real world. Okay, this is awesome. You're losing your voice. So before you do, I want to find out where should people go follow all these tips that you're giving on Instagram? Because you've you've committed to becoming the AI expert, like free content. You're just going to help people. Where should they go follow? Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Well, first of all, you can follow me on Instagram or all the socials at cause hacker. And then if you're looking to learn how to use chat GPT or work with these prompts, our program, Fast Foundations, you can go to fastfoundations.com slash chat GPT. And you can watch me teaching with an actual voice how to actually go through all this. And I can give you all the prompts and you can understand exactly how you can start to use it for your business. So everything we talked about, you actually go through and teach and explain. That's exactly correct. In that training, that totally free training, it's on YouTube. You can watch it there. I show exactly how you can build a business using ChatGPT and sell it and put everything together for it. And I dive into what it's like doing image creation. So you can go into mid journey and it shows how you can, you can ask for like a really cool looking photo, but then you can take it a step further. You can get variations of it and you can start to adapt it for your business. It's one of my favorite trainings. Insane. Okay. So to find you on Instagram, it's at cause hacker. Everybody go follow that for the free tips. But then the free training you're talking about, that's at fast foundations with an S fastfoundations.com forward slash what? Chat GPT. Chat GPT, fastfoundations.com forward slash chat GPT. Bro, if somebody's like, okay, I don't want to learn. I don't have time to learn because that's me, right? I'm always just like, who can do this for me? Do you, are you open to doing some consulting? Are you open to like holding people by the hand and just saying, okay, we're going to take your podcast and here's how we're going to turn everything into a blog. We're going to take your YouTube channel. We're going to turn it into a book. Are you open to guiding people like that? Absolutely. It's one of my favorite things to do to work one-on-one with people. Just send me a DM on Instagram and I'd love to learn about your business. Okay, cool. So DM Jim at Cause Hacker on Instagram. If you want him to do it all for you, uh, he'll be happy to hold your hand and guide you through that. Dude, I'm bringing you back. So we're going to do that show where people don't know it's an AI voice and we'll surprise them at the end. And as this thing evolves, because you said it's the fastest evolving thing ever, I'm going to keep bringing you back so we can keep learning how we can apply apply it to our business. You willing to do that? Absolutely. Can't wait. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Thanks for listening. And if you loved this episode and know of someone else who is as successful as they are generous, please pass them on to me. It would mean the world to me if you help me get this cause and this message out to as many listeners as I can. So please, if you liked what you heard, it goes a long way if you take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review and share this with your friends. I'll be forever grateful. And until the next episode, cheers to your success.